Hey guys, this is Eric Weigner with Weigner Racing. I'm doing a little tech video for you. Um, I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible, give you as much information as possible, because I don't want to waste your time. But this is kind of important. This is a head. Let's pretend that this is a head and this is the intake manifold. This would be perfect port alignment, because really the, this topic is going over port intake mismatch. This would be perfect. Great. Love this scenario. Awesome. This means you got the head, it looks like it lines up. It's one continuous runner, everything looks good. The problem is most intakes don't come that way. Or something like this. So, there we go. Now, usually they're smaller than the opening anyway, and then you've got a port match. So, a lot of people will just port match like through here and through here. And it gets you pretty close. At least you're making a transition. But if you notice, you end up with a step there, so you'll have to bring it further in. And sometimes there's not enough material either here or here to do that. Now, me personally, I like to have it more towards the lower side. If I can have it where the manifold, the lower manifold floor is touching because it's far easier to grind the top. Now, of course, that's sometimes there's an issue, granted. But I'm just telling you, I'd rather have it where the floor lines up than with the roof. So, because I can for sure weld material here, it's much harder to weld underneath the intake. So, however, this scenario is very common to most heads where you've got to do some port matching. And some heads themselves, they'll actually build it like this. So the head actually comes where the opening is something like this. So it's much smaller here. So it's like really small, but it gives you material to grind out to make it that way. However, you could fix that with the port match and it helps things out. But the worst case scenario is when you've got an intake that looks something like this. So there's our perfect one. But what happens if it was here? And this happens quite often, more than you think. There's no grinding you can do to fix this. This upper part of the runner is going to crash into the head itself, not into the runner, but into the head itself and create some issues there. Now you can grind out the floor and get it right, but you ain't fixing that. So how do you fix it? Well, what you can do is you can cut off part of this manifold flange here and what you do when you do that is you drop it down now you might be saying i don't understand a word you're saying well let's go to a live engine for an example here we go this is my mock-up block i use for fords um i just use it to mock up intake alignment and so on and so forth the heads are on here are a set of um, burdocks headhunter heads for a small block ford these are mine they are not mine they're for a customer but i've ported them already i'm going to port the intake now this is a stock intake. Now this is a CHI Commander 4.0. This is a little bonus knowledge for you Ford guys and Chevy guys may not appreciate this, but I promise you there's Chevy information if you pay attention here that's useful. If you decide to run this intake, CHI one, with the Ford heads, uh, these Headhunter heads, be aware of this. I'm doing my best to shine in there. Can you see the water opening? That's all you got. So what you have to do is you have to grind. So I made marks on my head here, there, and uh, there to show where the opening is. And I'll put a mark here on the intake and I will grind that hole open so they get flow there. It has nothing to do with airflow. So, but anyway, this does give the example of what I'm trying to show you. I don't have it set up right, I can tell, there we go. Okay, I've got this thing as about as level as I can because it should be this way on each side. I'm sorry for the camera. But look down at the intake port. See if the camera can focus on it. You see that metal shining right there at the top of the intake port? This is exactly like the picture shows. You can't grind that out. You can only grind the head itself, not the intake, bigger to make that opening better. But then you end up with a weird opening on the head. So you can fix it that way. But what I like to do is mill the intakes, and I'll show you. So that's that way. They might be saying, is it that way on the inner side too? Yes, if you have a lot right, like lined up, it should be. Look, and yes, you can... You can see it, this metal shining through there on both of them. So this is the intake that's actually going to get ported for it. It's the same intake. All I did was cut out the clover leaf, so I haven't began grinding yet. But what I did do is I cut off seventy-five thousandths on these ends, and I'm going to put it back up on the on the head on the on this engine real quick. So you can get a better look because what you should see is you shouldn't see any metal shining through the top roof here because i milled it so it should drop it down the other problem with that is too is when you mill like you can see here usually it's taken up where your head your valve cover gas can go so it's just a thought so milling it off usually helps so i'd rather mill off get the floor close and then go from there 
All right, so I'm gonna put this on there and show you real quick. So bear with me as you look at the inside of an intake manifold because I don't have someone helping me. All right, guys, thanks for the waiting. And you're like, why did you make us wait looking at something? Because I cut off the manifold, now you can see, well, we may not be able to see because the camera can't capture for nothing. But what you can't see, I want my light out, is you can't see the top of the runners anymore. So I'm sorry it's not a better view. It's really hard to show this. Right where the light's shining, you can't see the top of the head anymore. That's good. And the reason why is because when you mill the sides of the manifold, it will sink down. And that's what you want. Now, you might be saying, what's the disadvantage of doing this? If you're a Chevy guy, Fords don't have this. Right here is where the Chevy distributor sits. And a Chevy will have, well, I'll just look right here. Right there is where the Chevy distributor sits. And if I cut down the intake, the manifold itself sits lower. Which means the distributor is going to have a hard time lining up with the cam. So what you can do to fix that is run an uh, adjustable slip collar distributor, which honestly, everybody should run that anyway, because you'd be surprised how many deck heights are different and it messes up your alignment. The other problem comes from this. Now this is for Ford and Chevy. Not so much with this intake. This intake does not have end rails. It's got a spacer plate or a valley tray that goes underneath. So you don't have the problem with that. But this other Ford intake, you have right here. If I cut the flange down, this drops down which means it lowers the gap between here and down. Now, this only becomes an issue if it hits. So the smaller it is, the less silicone you have there, and it should seal better. However, if it hits here before hitting on the head, then it's not gonna seal. So hopefully that gives you some information and helps you with port alignment. So one of the things, the point I guess I'm trying to make is, if you're trying to get a perfect port match, it's better to mill the manifold first to get it down and then port. Usually it helps out a bunch. And it varies from intake to intake. So some are like, for a Chevy guy, the intake that's the worst one is the, for me, is the 2892. And uh, its port match is really close to perfect, but the problem is it's up too high. So usually I have to mill it down to get the 1206 to stick right where it should be on the head. So hopefully that helps. So that one's the one Fords for whatever reason, every single one of your intakes almost that way. Your Super Victor, yep. This thing, yep. So just something to keep in mind. Before someone comments about that, that's my junk head when I was trying to learn to weld. And I learned enough to know, uh, I don't know what I'm doing with the welding on the head. So I pay someone else to do it. That's quite honestly it. These are both junk heads. When the mill's not working, I put that one up first to make sure it's working before I tear up a good head. And that's just for, I'm just gonna mess with stuff or if I'm putting something outside and I need something to hold it down, I use that head. But they're junk. So before you think, that's your work? Yes, it is. And that's why I pay someone else to weld for me. Anyway, you guys take care. Have a good evening.